an interval, we're integrating over a region in the XY plane, all right? We're gonna talk about how that looks a little different. But that's the definite integral. So this first part, we're not gonna do that right now, but um, we're, and we're, oh, excuse me. We're not gonna do the uh, Riemann sum, so don't worry about that. But I wanna talk about basically what's going on in 14.1. And then in 14.2, uh, the main thing I wanna focus on is when our regions aren't rectangular. When our regions are rectangular, things are pretty straightforward. And so what I mean by this, um, we're integrating x squared plus y squared. So that's the function over some region in the xy plane. And that's the region is given by here. X is going from one to two, y is going from one to three. So one of the things we'll look at today is actually sketching our region of integration. So this is being our X, this is being our Y, because we can do this for double integrals. When we get to triple, it's gonna be a little trickier, but that's why we wanna spend the time getting double integrals down so that when we get to triple integrals, it's only adding an extra layer. So we're seeing that X goes from one to two, And y is going from one to three. So this is what we would call our region of integration. When it's a rectangle, it is very easy to set up our definite integral. The order does not matter. Um, all our limits are going to be constants. It makes for a very easy double integral. Now, when we go to work a problem, there might be an order that's easier than another order. Like we wanted to use u substitution or something like that. We may want to do integrate with respect to x first or y first. But in general, setting it up, we can set it up either way. And on an interval like this, the order really doesn't matter. So we're integrating over x squared plus y squared. And let's say we decide to do x first. X is going from one to two. And so we put that at the end at dx, all right, because this tells us the order. And then in terms of y, one to three. And that would be the setup for our double integral. And then we would calculate this. Now, this goes exactly the same way that the partial derivatives did, just the other direction. So if I'm integrating with respect to x, y is a constant. So my antiderivative would be, now we're not doing y yet, but we're gonna have x cubed over three plus y squared times x, because remember y is a constant, so y squared is a constant. And then that's going from one to two. And then we'll still have to integrate with, dy, with uh, respect to dy. So now you put your limits in just like you would your fundamental theorem of calculus. So we're gonna have one to three. We're gonna be putting in the limits two and one. Remember, we integrated with respect to X. So these are X values, okay? Y is still gonna be in there. So we have two cubed over three plus Y squared times two. And just to keep those separate, let's put parentheses around them. One cubed over three, plus y squared times one. And then we'll simplify this as much as we can. And at that point, we're down to a single variable integral. We're down to a calc one problem. So one to three, uh, let's see, we're gonna have eight thirds plus two y squared minus one third, I'm just gonna distribute this negative all at once, minus y squared. Dy, you can do the antiderivative here, but we might as well combine like terms first. Yep, so we can see the seven thirds for a fraction, and then two y squared minus y squared is just a plus y squared dy. And now a single variable problem seven thirds 
y plus y cubed over three from one to three. <clears throat> so seven thirds times three plus three cubed over three. So I'm running out of room here. Minus seven thirds times one plus one cubed over three. And let's see, that's why well, this is going to simplify. Those will cancel. We're going to end up with eight thirds there. Or sorry, that's a minus seven thirds plus a third. Um, so what do we got? This is going to be, that'll be nine. So we got 16 minus seven thirds plus a third. So that'll be a minus six thirds or minus two. So when all said and done, 14. Um, so I wanted to go through a whole one where, you know, we actually went through the process of doing the antiderivatives. And a couple of things I want to point out, and we'll point out, I'll be a little more emphatic about these in the next section, but the last set of limits always has to be constants. Otherwise, we're not going to get an answer. Not a big deal on this one because all our limits were constants. Just like with partial derivatives, you have to focus on one of your variables being a constant while you integrate with respect to the other. And you have to do your fundamental theorem. Again, now this is our easiest case when our region is just a rectangle. Questions about this one? So, uh, like I said, you're going to get a chance to practice this here in a little bit. Just a couple interpretations of the double integral. So just like uh, in single variable calc, we use a double integral to calculate area under a curve. These could calculate the volume under a curve above the region. So in this particular example, We've got our paraboloid here, and that paraboloid is coming out of the board like this. This is the region in the xy plane. What we calculated was the volume that's underneath our paraboloid that sits inside this square region. So if you can imagine a block going up to the paraboloid that calculates the volume under the surface and above the xy plane. So it's analogous to what we saw in single variable count. So that's one interpretation of the double integral is if we're integrating over a function, we're finding the volume underneath that surface and above the xy plane within the given region. Now, if we let the, um, if we let the integrand be one, then what we're actually calculating is the area of that region. For example, if I just, if we didn't have a function here, if this was just one, all this is going to do is calculate the area of that rectangle. Because we're going to have two minus one times three minus one for the area of that rectangle, which is two. And lastly, we can do also average value. So this is very similar to average value of function in single variable calculus. In single variable calculus, you do the average value, you do the integral of f of x dx from a to b, and you divide by the length of the interval. Now, in multivariable, in a double integral to do the average value, you do the double integral over your region, and then you divide by the area of the region. So if we wanted the average value, of this function over this region, we would divide by the area of the region, which is one by two rectangle. So if we took 14 over two, seven is the average value of the function over this region. Because right? what's happening is this surface is not flat over this region, right? It's some paraboloid that's opening upwards. Well, the average value, the average Z value over this region is seven. That's what it's saying. 
And it's nothing more than doing the double integral and dividing by the area of the region. So those are just some interpretations of the double integral. Questions at this point? 